Hey you guys, let's try and straighten up this flaming camera a little bit. I've got something pretty cool to show you guys today. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Orange Pi, uh, Retro Orange Pi 4.1 on the Orange Pi PC. Uh, and something else that I wanted to show you guys as well. So, uh, I'm going to plug her in and we're going to watch the boot up screen together. And then we're going to try out this cool little thing that I found out actually works on the Retro Orange Pi. Now obviously on the Retro Orange Pi you don't get inbuilt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I mean on the Orange Pi PC that I have, you don't get uh, you don't get Bluetooth connectivity and you don't get Wi-Fi either, which kind of sucks because Wi-Fi is pretty awesome uh, to have these days. And you do get it on the uh, Raspberry Pi free. So hopefully we can boot up. There we go. Yes! Okie dokies. So you can see that they've actually changed the interface a hell of a lot. And uh, I might have to turn it down due to copyright. <laughs> Hold on a second. Where is the remote for the TV? So I can turn it down. Right, okay. So you can see there's no gamepads detected. But if I show you this, can you see this? Maybe I need some light. Let me get some light. So, if we get some light, you can see I bought this. Now this is the USB PlayStation 4 adapter, and it's actually for uh, the PC because because um, I have one of those now, and I wanted to use my controller on my PC. It comes in really handy for that. But it also works, hey up, on the Orange Pi. Now, I wish I could sh sort of get this so that it's easier for you to see. Right, let's just take it off. So here is our Orange Pi PC and if we plug her into one of the USB jacks, bear with me, bear with me, bad recording skills I know, we plug her in to one of them and this works in any of them, which is pretty cool. It comes on, like so. And it does work in any of them, which is really cool. Um, I think there's like one low powered slot, but it works with that. Anyway, we hold it down to initiate the pairing sequence. And it'll start flashing wildly. And all I have to do now is get my PS4 controller, like so, and hold down the share and the uh, thingy symbol at the same time and she should start flashing like so and as you can see we are now connected and we should be able to configure uh, this wirelessly um, there we go and we're in so as you can see we can configure this puppy wirelessly got a little bit of volume on there um, and retro orange pie works great with this. I've already set this um, controller up so you do have to map your buttons at the beginning but once you've done that it remembers it and every time you load up you can use your controller basically. So um, changes, well the UI has changed since Retro Orange Pi 3 I think it was last time I showed you. Uh, there's a little bit of a UI change, definitely a boot up change. Overall though, let's see if we can get this off out of, out of a wonk. Overall, I quite like the changes. I just wish that um, I wish that we'd kept the old boot up. I did like the whole emulation station boot up thing. I thought it was pretty cool. So you see, we've got PSP, we've got PlayStation, we've got RetroPie, we've got ScumVM, we've got Super Nintendo, we've got Amiga, Kodi, Mame, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, Nintendo 64, Neo Geo, Nintendo Master System, and PC ports. Now. There is one thing that still doesn't work for me on the Orange Pi PC with Retro Orange Pi, and that is loading up ROMs. I can't seem to just put in a USB stick and copy them over. It doesn't work like that for me. I actually have to plug the USB stick in with the ROMs on, head through Retro Pi setup, go to the file manager and copy them over manually. Um, and once they're copied over manually, I'm not even sure if we have any... Do we have any PS1 games? 
Yeah, that, that one doesn't work for me right now. But once I copied over manually, they stay in the slot. Do we have any Scum VM demos? No. Um, Super Nintendo? Nope. I'm trying to remember what we have. It does, if you well, wait, it'll say one game available. Down below on the left hand side, look. Mame, it says one game available. When you go to it, there are no games. Sega Mario System. As you can see, each one has its own little um, t sort of difference and you can somehow, I need to figure it out, get a recording of your gameplay in the little TV screen there you see on the screen. I know I have some N64 games and I know I have some NES games I think. Yeah, but it's, uh, NES ROMs and in here we have a ton of games. Now, I'm just checking out the window because the weather said it's supposed to snow tonight. Uh, hopefully it does because at the minute it's raining. Yeah, so um, we can basically play any of these games. Let me pick one at random. So I'm just going to scroll down, see there enough. Oh, boom. Uh, it should just load up. And here we are we have loaded up. I will turn down the music just in case because you never know who's copywriting this crap nowadays. Oh man this is terrible. Wait a second. Okay let's just... Now to get out we simply press I think it's the touchpad and options for me. Touchpad and options because I configured it that way gets me out. Let's find something like Super Mario. You know, like like what the kids used to play back in the day. I remember having um, a Nintendo Entertainment System. It wasn't mine actually, it was family members. And the only game that we had to physically play was Super Mario. As you can see, once you've loaded up these ROMs, you can have like all of them. I think I've got the entire library on here of NES ROMs, which is pretty cool. There's some, there's some ones I haven't played, ones that I need to go through. But I like the fact I can use it with the controller. Ah, there we go. Let's go to Super Mario Brothers 2, shall we? Uh, obviously, Nintendo like to copyright this shit these days. They seem to have a, uh, they seem to have a group of people that, that work on just getting rid of these. Cool things. Now on HD TV, does it does default to its aspect ratio of 4.3, but the Orange Pi PC doesn't do a bad job with Retro Orange Pi on it, uh, up resing it to make it cool, or at least look decent. I think you can go in and change the settings some more. Um, okay, I'm not sure what's going on right now because I haven't played this game before. This doesn't look like it's. This doesn't look right. Ah, there we go. I can't remember how to play Mario on. It's because I've mapped the buttons weird, I think. But I can still use the D-pad works, um, the X and circle buttons work. <laughs> yeah. So you can see that that works. Where's the original Super Mario Bros? Because... Let's go to E. Let's see if we can get some volume on this. I don't I don't care if I get copyrighted with this video. Well, I do care, but... You can see it says on the bottom 100% Sony DualShock 4. Just flash across the screen. Now this one can be played with one or two players. Alas, I can't seem to be able to change it at all to the second player. Maybe you have to have two controllers plugged in at the same time. But the USB... There we go. Here's the sound we all want to hear. I remember playing this back in the day and like... Oh my god. Brings back so many memories. There's a little bit of frame stuttering though. Did you notice that? Which is weird. But how do we run? There we go. It did it, did it. One of these, I think it's this next one. Has a thing. There we go. Did it, did it. 
Oh my god, man. It's, it, honestly, Retro Pi on the Orange Pi PC is awesome. And obviously you can get on the Raspberry Pi as well. And unfortunately for me, the Orange Pi was a lot cheaper. Ah, oh, okay. So I went with the Orange Pi PC from Gear Best because it was like 10 quid at the time. So that's NES emulation. A little bit on that. Let's. Okay, so we can go to uh, N64, I do have some on here, and we can play, let's try Banjo-Kazooie, because some of this stuff doesn't quite work well on my GCW0, so I want to see how it works well on the Orange Pi PC with that slightly better processor and a bit more RAM. Now I never actually got to play Banjo-Kazooie on the N64. The games I played, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, I played Super Mario 64, um, what else did I have? Was it Rockstar's first ever game on the N64? What was it called? I can't think of it, but it was before they became Rockstar. I played that. It was like an alien type open world game, it was incredible. Uh, Turok was a... was that an N64? Yeah, Turok was an N64 title that I played. Why have we not got much sound on here? Um, there we go. There's plenty of games that I played um, on the Nintendo, but Banjo-Kazooie just wasn't one of them, and I never got around to playing it. You used the control stick to select the game. So this one actually takes into account the analog stick here, which is pretty cool. Again, it defaults to its 4.3 aspect ratio. Some may be able to get... I don't know how to get around that. I'd like to be able to change that so that it was widescreen, but then would it look a bit weird widescreen? But Banjo-Kazooie seems to run pretty flawlessly compared to the GCW where it does lock up quite a bit. Jesus, the weather is awful outside right now. Yeah. It, it even has the scan lines in as well, which is really cool. There will be some other games I try on this. I think I did try a few, but they just... N64 seems to be a bit iffy. I haven't tried any PSP games yet, but I would like to try Daxter on the PSP, because that was just... An absolutely awesomely fun game. Well, it's got quite an intro, this one. Oh, wait. Oh, how did I do that? I just pressed the touchpad and square. And this brings up, like, the emulation station menu. What did I press? Touchpad and circle doesn't really... I think touchpad and circle just crashed it. Or paused the uh, emulation. Wait a second. Okay, I've just come out of it. But you can see that it works. Super Mario 64 works. Um, yeah, it's... I need to try out some of the rest, because I haven't actually played... I never played the Neo Geo. I played the PSP, I played the PlayStation, obviously I played the, um, I played, no I didn't play the SNES, I played the NES, but not the SNES, never played the Amiga, I never played MAME, I did, however, have a Sega Mega Drive, so hopefully if I can get Sonic the Hedgehog on here at some point, I'll be able to play some of that. So yeah, it's pretty cool, and I, I like the way it looks now, I hope that there's more, um, in the way of improvements with Retro Orange Pi. I definitely need to add some more ROMs to this though, and hopefully I'll find a way that's easier to do it than what I've been doing. If you enjoyed this video guys, hit the like button, I know it's a little bit long winded. If you didn't, then hit the dislike button by all means. If you want to see more on the Orange Pi PC, then please let me know below. And uh, as always guys, I hope you like the new channel name, 8-Brit Generation. If you want to be a part of the 8-Brit Generation, then yeah, do subscribe guys. I've had to change it due to some... Uh, Serious problems I've been having, like trademarks and crap. <laughs> By their YouTubers, that is. 
because they think I've copyrighted their stuff. It's quite comical, really. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.